This is for the Super Live channel. Hi, Super Live. Say hey, YouTube, y'all. Hey, YouTube. Hey. He knew about him. Oh, shit. Hold up. 13, you could not go anywhere without hearing the song Thrift Shop. Far from your typical rap song, Macklemore. I'm going to bop some tags. Only got $20 in my pockets. Now, that's insane. One hit wonder Damn, he buff? He carried the most stereotypical buff for no reason. image that is possible. One billion? Yo, Macklemore got motion? When Macklemore got motion? When he get motion? I didn't know that shit had that many? 1B? This track was definitely more of a standard pop track, but two Billboard number ones in his first year as a mainstream artist. He got artist jacked. Stamped that he was a force to be reckoned with. However, it was all about to come crashing down. As oh, shit suffer from success at the 2014 annual grammy awards macklemore was why he kind of looked like a different version of pete davidson am i tweaking i feel like he's his evil twin i feel like he'll be pete if he did music in seven categories the biggest and most prestigious being best rap album he's a good twin okay yeah the good After twin the good twin right 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 and best new artist people were happy to see him win two grammys nominated for best rap song up against drake kanye west jay-z it seemed unlikely Mac Damn. would win but thrift shop was in fact the winner of best rap song of 2014 securing him his third grammy of <laughs> yo pharrell in his fat hat no nah, he thought he was sliding in the background that hat that hat in that era was hideous like he thought he was doing something baby <laughs> yo he thought he was doing something bro a private detective head tall head bro hiding something under there <laughs> night but what would come next would shock the world Up hello Drake's, nothing was the same jay-z's magna carta kendrick lamar's good kid mad City, no no wait 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 wait, wait. this was the year that he he won he won against all them albums bro you really telling me he won against nothing hold on let me let me fin let me, let me let him finish let him finish absolutely no chance of winning everyone was betting on kendrick since he without a doubt had the best album of the bunch but wouldn't be entirely surprised if it went to the look other. here he go again look they got him again <laughs> Yo, he thought he was it with that hat. He thought he was it. Listen, that that goes to show when you like something, <laughs> when you like some, bro. Nobody can tell you nothing, bro. The hip hop community was floored when Mac bro, like, think about it though. Good kid, Mad City. Let's go through it real quick. Let's go through it. Just let's just just real quick, real quick, real quick. Don't kill my vibe. Backseat freestyle. The art of peer pressure was good, but it wasn't my favorite. Money trees bro money trees poetic justice you can get it you can get it swimming pools sing about me you telling me that lost the macklemore that had an album on him and he lost the macklemore that was just kendrick that was just one of the nominee not not nominees was it nothing was the same wu-tang forever i loved wu-tang forever worst behavior from time, just hold on, we're going home. All me, I loved all me. That was just me though. Pound cake. You telling me all this, shit, all those those two albums lost against Macklemore. This right here. Can't hold this was a good song, but his album was not that good compared to those two albums. And it was Ryan staged. Lewis's the heist won best rap album of the year. The heist couldn't be a more fitting name for this absolute robbery. Macklemore was being cooked by the hip hop community online. As he should. Like, this is the one time I definitely agree. Why? Why? That don't make sense. Reminding him in every comment section that he didn't deserve to win. He felt so much pressure that he decided to text Kendrick Lamar and apologize. You got robbed. I wanted you to win. You should have. It's weird and sucks that I robbed you. I was gonna say that during the speech. Then the music started playing during my speech and I froze. Anyway, you know what it is. Congrats on this year and your music. Appreciate you as an artist and as a friend. Much love. We wouldn't have ever seen this text if Macklemore didn't post it to social media. Oh, he posted that. Do y'all think he has something to do with that? Y'all think, you think, or you think that maybe the label did? Because sometimes I know the artists really don't have nothing to do with it. The labels, the people that's backing them, will do like that for them to make them to push them up. You know what I'm saying? So it might have not just been him, but I feel like he somewhat knew about it. 
nah bro like I, I knew it too i felt your pain my bad bro like that was crazy like you deserve to win that but like yeah and the whole time he knew he already knew he already knew he was gonna win i texted kendrick after the show he deserved the best rap album i'm honored and completely blown away to win anything less than four grammys but in that category he should have won in my opinion that's taking nothing away from the heist just giving the proper respect with that being said thank you the thank you to the fans you're the reason we're on the stage tonight and to play same love on the play same love on the platform that was the career highlight the greatest honor of all that's what this is about this is back when we used to actually use facebook good graces with the public did you ever feel any way about him posting the text message or anything like that yeah i think it was uncalled for to be 100 with you uh, mm -hmm. when he sent it to me i was like okay you know i could see him feeling that type of way because he's a good dude but um I think for, for confirmation from the world, you know, he probably felt like he had to put it out there, which he didn't need to do. He didn't need to do, but that don't take nothing away from him anyway, because I know where his heart is at, he cool. Despite Kendrick being cool. Nah, Kendrick, say was real, bro. You know that was corn. He didn't have to do that. That's crazy watching people like Kendrick and like, y'all ever think like people like Kendrick who's doing, who used to do interviews or Beyonce or just anybody who used to do interviews who don't do it anymore. It's crazy to think about, like, damn, like, niggas was actually back then, like, doing interviews. Like, now they don't do Zendaya. When's the last time you've seen Zendaya do a interview? Never. I was arguing with left and right on Twitter when he won. <laughs> All the time, he was in the club celebrating five bottles deep. Bro, come on, bro. He sent that out of guilt. Fans could never truly accept Macklemore as a part of the culture. They thought he was disingenuous, and they didn't really like his music in the first place, so this was an easy excuse to forget about him. He stepped out of the limelight and many You know who I keep confusing him for? Easy E. Not Easy E, but um G Easy. G Easy. My bad. G Easy. G Easy and Macklemore. Like they kinda look like the same like low key. His name is Gerald. Wait, his name was Gerald? What the f Gerald Earl Gillum. I guess that's what puts the G in G Easy, right? Just ever again. He felt guilt, and that guilt ate him alive. His 2016 album, This Unruly Mess I Made, sold just 61,000 copies in the first week. Him and Ryan Lewis split up shortly after, and Mac released another solo album, Gemini, that did decent amongst his fan base. but ultimately, he hasn't had any major mainstream success in almost a decade. But unlike Macklemore, DaBaby refused to apologize to anyone, which is leading to one of the dumbest downfalls of all time. Baby exploded onto the mainstream rap scene in 2019 with his hit song, Suge, which peaked at number seven on the Billboard. Yo, y'all cannot lie, bro, though. Like, I'm, I'm all bad for pausing it, but like, y'all can't lie, bro. This song was so different when it came out, bro. Like, I ain't never heard no shit like this in my life. When this shit came out, I'm like, damn, hold up, what? That shit was actually different. Like, I ain't never heard no shit like that before. Like, and then of course he kept doing the same song over and over low key like the same type of flow so it sounded repetitive over time but when it first came i'm like damn i ain't never heard no sh like this this is snapping how 100 in a world of repetitive melodic trap the baby felt fresh and exciting providing us with bouncy and fun bangers i like i liked bop too i like bop too for the next two years constantly having multiple singles on the billboard hot 100 and he was in regular rotation on the radio his track rockstar with roddy rich was the number one song for seven weeks straight a very tough thing to bro do played on the radio every single day i was sick of this song as a hip-hop artist but the baby was always known for having a bold personality he was the type to say whatever he wanted and if you had a problem he was more than willing to handle it he even killed a guy in walmart don't worry it was self-defense well in july of 20 oh, he said it like that patrick what, what you trying to say pat I, why are you trying to say you even killed a walmart <laughs> don't worry it was self-defense he's not a hooligan loud his loose lips got him in major trouble Made his loose lips sank ships you didn't show up today with hiv aids any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases gonna make you die two three weeks put a cell phone like that up lady if you smell like water put a cell phone like that up nah because like why did he say all this like you know what i'm saying regardless of the backlash it's like why would you even say any of this like this is so much like what were you trying to be funny? Like, I, I'm, I'm so confused of what the impact he was trying to make here. Was it a joke? Like, who are you talking to? Like, I'm just so confused. Fellas, lights up. 
fellas, if you ain't sucking niggas in the parking lot, put your cell phone right there. Completely unprovoked and for no reason at all, DaBaby was thinking about gay men and what they do in their free time while he was on stage performing. He referred to people with AIDS as dirty and will likely die soon from the illness. Both statements are categorically and factually untrue. The clip was shared onto the internet and sent millions of- I'm so confused. And then people were saying like, why would he say all this unless he like low key was like with, you know what I'm saying? They be, there be theories. I seen the TikTok theories saying that he wouldn't be saying this if he wasn't kind of in that, into that. Maybe he was salty that his man like cheated on him or something like, we see what be happening with Diddy. You never know, never know. I'm just saying, I don't know though. I don't know though. I don't know though. I don't know though. People into an uproar. The baby oh, no. addressed this on his Instagram and clarified his message. I wasn't going on no rant. That's called a call to action. That's what that's called because I'm a live performer. I'm the best live performer. I'm a live show killer. The whole city of Charlotte know his tea. Tell us. Hello? Or we want to know too. All the lights went up gay straight. You want to know why? Because even my gay fans don't got fucking AIDS, you stupid ass nigga. Him doubling down on his comments made everything way worse as he clearly was very uneducated on the AIDS disease and the unfair stigmas that come with it. And although he eventually issued an apology addressing the LGBTQ community. That was rote for him, bro. Like, I'm telling y'all, all these like this that look this civilized, I ain't never seen this type like this in my life. Ever. Do I know him? No. But I'm just saying, like, we know he don't type like this. Somebody wrote this for him, sent it to him and said, just put the baby at the end. He said, all right. Countless contradictory statements after, he tried to profit off the controversy in music videos and even kind of redacted his own apology. If I say what I say to get people to raise their cell phones and it's misinterpreted by people who watch a five second clip at home, you're not supposed to understand what's going on. You couldn't raise your cell phone if you wanted to. So you ain't supposed to be able to digest a clip, uh, you know what I'm saying? A clip that been altered and and shorten with a narrative to go along with it with enough people driving and it's gonna do what it do from here he got kicked off every major festival in 2021 that he uh, yeah he kind of did that to himself bro like he trying to over explain it bro it's just like let your pr do the work bro let your pr do the work and don't say nothing else he trying to over explain it when they ask you say no comment you gotta answer it you don't like he kind of did that shit to himself you either going to stand on it or you going or you going to like apologize and stand on that. Like you can't play both. You can't apologize and go back and be like, "Yeah, well, I still said what I said." He was supposed to I don't make sense. You got to pick one or the other. Perform. He was booed and had garbage thrown at him. Damn. Garbage. Fellow collaborators condemned him, but the controversy continued. He got into fights. Just finished a soda and just started chucking it. And broke down the mother of his child on Instagram. And I was up. Just one of his fans without consent. Ew, what the not trying to save face he just kept saying i'm sorry for being me his ticket sales plummeted which resorted to him offering buy one get one free deals to fill out the venues one report alleged that he only no way. sold 500 tickets to a venue that holds 14,000 people and he claims to have lost 30 million dollars because of the controversy like what, the, what were the a week or two that? after 20 30 million dollars 20 30 million dollars that i would have had before the ball drop 2021 so this happened rolling out what july I had thirty million dollars worth of shit. Do y'all think he would be like one of the biggest if this never happened? I feel like this was already trying to find a reason to not really with him because he was already what punching women and shit and just doing weird shit. But I feel like that's what definitely ended his shit a little bit. Y'all, I don't think he'll be up. He was like up for a minute. All his songs was trending on TikTok. I the, the cry baby shit was trending. That one song freestyle that shit blew up on TikTok. He has a bunch of songs on TikTok twenty four seven. He could have probably collabed with type shit like i think that just deter because it definitely deterred him from performing at audience like not audiences performing at events and shit, performing at festivals and then when that stuff of stuff happens they take you off the festivals people don't want to collab with you because you look bad you know what i'm saying people don't want to work with you you know you lose money you lose fans but if you got emotion still and you're not canceled they don't want to work with you they're going to do collabs with you you still show that damn you can still show up to the festivals but i think he would have still been he might have not been as big but he would have definitely been bigger than what he is now it wouldn't have fell off as bad as he did that's what i think though i don't know the heist been avoided but if you think what the baby said was bad you'll be horrified by what CeeLo green said damn what CeeLo say because y'all think i'm crazy crazy possibly 
I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. <laughs> that nigga head. Yo, he has the craziest cranium I've ever seen in my whole entire existence. His previous duo, Gnarls Barkley. You definitely and it just got wider and wider in the back. Like, it only inflates from the back, bro. It, is, it just widens Most like a jaw. Songs, crazy and forget you. Crazy peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and spent 20. Oh, wait, no. You said the change in my pocket wasn't enough. Said if I was with. Say, y'all, come on. Still be with y'all. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that some shit? Bro, y'all supposed to sing with me, bro. Lame, bro. Y'all lame, bro. Solo four years later, also went number two on the Hot 100 after spending almost a full year on the charts. CeeLo had a very unique voice and was undeniably talented. He pretty much only gave us two hits, but was an ever-present pop culture figure throughout the early 2010s. Whether he was hosting an award show, his own reality show, oh, his teeth is big as shit. being a judge on The Voice, CeeLo was loved and appreciated until some shocking allegations arose. CeeLo uh -oh. was accused by a 33-year-old woman he dined with at a downtown Los Angeles sushi restaurant of placing ecstasy, also known as MDMA or Molly, in her drink. The woman later told Los Angeles police detectives she woke up naked in bed in her hotel room with Green. Uh -oh. CeeLo allegedly admitted to law enforcement that he took uh -oh. ecstasy but denied drugging the woman's drink or committing sexual assault. And bro, CeeLo like, like, Nick, bro. Bitch is not loving your cranium no more. They're not kissing the back of your cranium. I thought it would fuck you if she don't want to be with you. You got to drug her to stay? Bro, what's up, bro? Why do niggas, like, get this type of status and they start doing weird shit, bro? Like, you can just get the bitch, bro. She going to fuck you anyway. Like, why you? Oh, why you? Uh, listen, bro. Assault charges. Like, I don't know. You just, like, you're already big. Why do you have to do that? That don't make any sense to me. Prosecutors concluded there wasn't enough evidence to take that accusation to court. But he was found guilty on drug charges, which landed him three years probation. But it wasn't the nature of the charges that ruined his career. I feel like the, I feel like his forehead is like proceeding over his eyes, and then soon his forehead will be his eyes will be shadowed with his forehead. The case. After being criticized by people in public tweets, he decided to respond. Women who have really been R-worded remember, but point taken. So if I tried but did not succeed, but the person said I did, then what really happened? When someone breaks in a home, there is broken glass. Where is your plausible proof anyone was R-worded? If someone passed out, they're not even with you consciously. So with implies consent. It's hard to see what point he was trying to make here, but the blogs were not holding back. See, like what the f is he talking about bro wait what like huh is he trying to say that he tried and he attempted to but the bitch was all like kind of up like what he's saying bro bro trying to speak in ri riddles and psalms and like eh. bro what too many thoughts just flying out his dome he just that's why you need hair bro to contain your thoughts your thoughts shouldn't be coming out as freely i know this is always bald niggas who just be talking about nothing like andrew tate you know what I'm saying? Him, Andrew Tate. Like, when you ball, your thoughts just flow free. Like, it just gotta, it gotta be trapped by something. It's not trapped. If the Caillou, like, Caillou wasn't talking about shit either. Let's be real. His bald ass wasn't talking about shit. Why his parents told him to sit his ass down. Like, let's be real, bro. Come on. Bald niggas don't be talking about nothing. Lil Bill, too. Conscious. Show little ass down. Eat these apples. These tweets, his reputation was destroyed. He lost all of his live performance bookings. He quit The Voice to avoid being fired. His TV show was canceled. And he basically disappeared from the pop culture zeitgeist. Pretty much surviving off royalties and small film roles here and there. But I guess him and I are friends now? Yo, Pat, what's up, man? Uh, I'm assuming that your friends call you Pat. My friends do call me Pat, so. And um, I consider myself to be one of your friends. I consider myself to be one of your friends. The next person on. Bro, what? Wait, what? What? What is he trying to flex, Pat? What? In fact, it may have even been a setup. Janet Jackson is a woman who needs no introduction. She is the youngest of the nine iconic Jackson family siblings. Although she was not a part of the original Jackson 5, she would go on to have a massive solo music career. Jackson signed the first of two record-breaking multi-million dollar contracts with Virgin Records, establishing her as one of the highest paid artists in the industry. She was named by Billboard magazine in the 90s as the second most successful recording artist of the decade in the United States after Mariah Carey. 
over 100 million records sold, 10 Billboard number one songs, 27 top 10 hits, she is easily the most successful artist on this list, which is why her downfall is even more tragic. The Super Bowl Aww. in America is always the most watched televised program every year, with an average of around 100 million people watching the game. The halftime show has historically been a major milestone in an artist's career, as it is the biggest stage they will likely ever be on. In 2004, Janet Jackson was asked to do the show, but not by herself, which was surprising since she easily had enough hits to do a full set. Instead, she only got to perform two of her songs. The other time was filled out by Justin Timberlake, Diddy, Nelly, Kid Rock, and Jessica Simpson. The very last song of the performance was Justin's hit song, Rock Your Body, in which Janet assisted him. The two met at the center of the stage to pose for the grand finale. Justin reaches across Janet's body and pulls off the chest piece of her costume, exposing her breast to 90 million people. The wardrobe malfunction is considered the biggest controversy in televised history. Oh yeah, they were saying this shit was real, like he actually did it on purpose, or, or like he knew or some shit. And then the only thing about it that like kind of tingled me the wrong way was the fact that he was laughing after like after she was embarrassed like not trying to cover her up or nothing like come on bro you gonna pull the bitch off because it's a part of the routine but you're not even gonna try to cover it up when something go wrong like the niggas gonna chuckle gonna look at you and chuckle laugh too oh that's so embarrassing bro that's something that like turned me the wrong way from him and since then it's just been a downhill slope not gonna lie rock your body is fire but other than that and the beyonce song who the f is this nigga bitch ass actually. nigga Fuck you. The inspiration for YouTube. We love Janet Jackson. Finding footage to rewatch online. Now, to some degree, this was planned. Justin's intention was to pull the leather piece off her chest and expose the red underneath, but he ripped too much. In the split second the camera was on Janet, you can see her look down in shock. She tried to cover herself while Timberlake stood holding the ripped pieces of her costume and bra. The FCC received more than 500,000 complaints after the performance. CBS was fined $550,000 and the halftime spot. Bro, what little kids is really watching the fucking Super Bowl, bro? I mean, maybe the halftime show. I can understand that. Maybe. Maybe. Like, they, them niggas ain't have school the next day? Like, what little ass kid is sitting there actually watching the NFL? Like, yo, I want to see who wins. Nigga, you do not care. Go watch Teletubbies. Justin apologized. MTV apologized. Janet apologized, even though she later regretted it because it was an accident. The media went into an all-out frenzy. The FCC investigated the halftime show to see if this was a planned media stunt meant to shock the world, citing that because she was wearing a nipple covering, that was evidence this was all set up. Class action lawsuits were filed against Janet by random citizens claiming that her sexually explicit performance deserved maximum punitive damages. Nah, niggas is OD, bro. Niggas was just money hungry at that point. You telling me, like, her showing her nipple, like, come on, bro. Like, some of you weirdo niggas be touching your kids. Like, let's be honest, bro. Like, I hated to take it there, but come on. And this shit has just shocked you? Like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. The niggas was probably happy to see it. And any kids who seen it, like, why was they watching that? Nation dragged it wasn't that deep. Viacom had to pay out $3.5 million to settle various indecency complaints, so they went and banned all radio and TV stations that they owned from playing any of Janet Jackson's music. Janet was nah, that's crazy over an accident, and Justin was not punished at all, even though it was definitely his fault. There is no doubt her punishment was unfair and likely due to her gender and race. Her career after that wasn't totally dismantled. She did have a number one album, a Grammy nomination, some light billboard presence, but this incident lingered like a dark cloud over her head for many years and slowly she faded out of the mainstream. I am one of those women. Women who have been- She sounds just like Michael. Like, it's just giving hee hee. <laughs> both literally and emotionally <laughs> women who have been abused <laughs> who have been intimidated <laughs> who have lived in fear I <laughs> However, we love today, you, Janet. most people can all agree that this was just an overreaction, and she is still highly regarded as one of the most iconic pop stars of all time. Overreacting to small mistakes seemed to be common in the early 2000s, because this next artist's career was destroyed by something so small, it's almost unbelievable. Ashley Simpson was the younger sister uh Oh, Uh-oh, Botox. Botox. Back in the day, Botox. Yo, this the OG Botox. Oh my gosh, bro, those icebreakers? I remember when they came in containers like that, bro. Am I old, bro? Am I old for that? 
Bro, I remember when they came in like containers like that, bro. What? Bro, you remember them breath strips? And nah, those are definitely veneers. Them fat ass teeth. He already famous. No, it's not candy. It's like it's like it's like Mentos or something. Pop star Jessica Simpson, who is a multi-platinum billboard charting recording artist. She also had her own MTV show, Newlyweds, Nick and Jessica, was one of the most popular programs on the network. MTV wanted to capitalize on the Simpsons sisters' newfound fame and gave Ashley her own series called The Ashley Simpson Show. The series ran for two seasons and aired every she week ugly? on MTV directly after Jessica's show. Viewers who were invested in Jess were introduced to Ashley immediately after. Ashley was desperate to not live in the shadows of her sister. She dyed her naturally blonde hair brown and built a pop punk image to complement her pop rock music. Her album's lead single, Pieces of Me, became an instant hit in the United States. The song peaked at number 5 on the US Billboard Hot 100 and sold over 500,000 copies nationwide. Ashley's debut album was released soon after, with an estimated 398,000 copies sold in its first week. Worldwide, the album sold more than 5 million copies. She had a bigger debut than her sister, but her career ended just before it took off. Saturday Night Live, 2004. Ashley Simpson was set to perform her single pieces. Oh, I think I remember this. Me when this happened. On a Monday, I'm waiting. Tuesday, I'm there. <laughs> Yo, the whole background track just going, bro. Saying every word for her. Uh, damn. I know she was embarrassed. I know her heart was beating hard. Oh, what's going on? Yo, stop it. Stop. Oh, hell no. She decided to do that. <laughs> Yo, look. <laughs> Yo. Bitch decided to jig. She jigged, bro. She blamed her band. If she just told the truth right away, she may have been able to avoid the backlash. But instead, Ashley became a laughing stock. Nah, was this Saturday Night Live? Yo, Saturday Night Live was like the OG, like, TikTok. Well, not probably not TikTok. Maybe like a little bit. Um, Vine, definitely. Like, skits. Like, they did the first skits, bro. They was clowning anybody. They went the extra mile. They dressed up just like them. Had the band in the back. All that. That's kind of embarrassing. I would have cried. Bro, look. Nah, that's crazy. Nah. I remember this episode too, bro. <laughs> I remember this. Yo, I, I did not know it came from that, bro. <laughs> Even news anchors poked fun at her. Sisters bro. Saturday Night Live was, well, out of sync, you could say. All right. Sorry. We had to do that. <laughs> it was just our own Damn. Thing. Not them cloning her, bro. Damn, like, why the news anchors eating her up? Why the news anchors doing it too? Why? And the Mad Libs. Even though Ashley was a decent performer, and she did have an opportunity to redeem herself on various late night shows, nobody cared. Nobody wanted to give her a second chance. It was too much fun to make jokes and boo her off stage. Damn, not the whole stadium booing her boyfriend in 2005 and her second album eventually selling 3 million copies worldwide but she had already seen the peak of her music career and as it slowly dwindled away she maintained her relevance in the 2010s through relationships various television projects and her own social media but the last person on our list has the most unexpected shocking and horrifying and damn this nigga got less than like what two minutes of talk everybody else took up the whole video this man get the last few seconds incidents Silento. Prison. In twenty fifteen, was dancing to Silento's hit Ew. song "Watch Me." The song. Oh, I hate when. And horrifying incidents that landed them in prison. 
In 2015, the world was dancing to Silent Ho's hit song, Watch Me. The song oh, that's the I Am View dance, too. Like, I, that's the, what the I Am View dance look exactly like. They fucked it all the way up. Massive viral dance, the whip, and the nae nae. All of social media was flooded with videos of people doing the dance. With Vine and Instagram peaking in popularity, Silent Hill laid the foundation for what would become extremely normal on TikTok many years later. He performed at award shows, on Nickelodeon, every talk show in America. The virality got the single to number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as 1.8 billion views on YouTube. Today, the record is six times platinum. Unfortunately, hip-hop dance tracks have a history of being impossible to outdo, because for every one that becomes culturally iconic, there are hundreds of cheesy failed attempts to recreate the moment. Silent Hill waited three years to drop his album, Fresh Outta High School, which failed to generate any buzz, and his second album went almost totally unnoticed. But before you could fully count him out, he made a decision that officially ended his career. On January 21st, 2021, the 23-year-old rapper was arrested for the murder of his cousin, 34-year-old Frederick Rooks, after a shooting in DeKalb County, Georgia. Damn. He said officers found Rooks suffering from multiple gunshot wounds at a home off of Deep Shoals Circle. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators did not have a suspect no way. at the time. Responding officers were able to obtain video from the security cameras of multiple residents and later identified Hawk, or Silento, as the gunman. Silento was arrested February 1st, 2021, and then later indicted by a Georgia grand jury on four felonies. One count of malice murder, one count of felony murder, aggravated assault, and gun possession during the commission of a felony. As of now, the court has deemed Silent Hill unfit for the safety of the public and will remain incarcerated until further trial. Since the trial has not started yet, we don't know how he did it, we don't know why he did it, and we don't know how long he might be in jail. I thought that was Chloe, Chloe Bailey. Like, I know who that was. Damn, bro.